So I, I guess we're going to respond. Um, you know, that's what the Biden administration says. We had um, three American servicemen killed, uh, dozens more uh, injured. This was an overnight uh, drone strike uh, inside uh, of Jordan near the Syrian border. Um, Iran back militias blame for this. Um, these are the first U.S. fatalities after months and months of strikes, multiple strikes. And that's to say that there's also been people that have been seriously hurt by these strikes uh, over this period of time. Again, uh, I, 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 we just spent a lot more time covering foreign policy here on the podcast, and I've kind of gotten away from it uh, to, to some degree, uh, maybe it's just out of frustration. It wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. It, that's the type of calculation that, it, again, I, I, I don't really understand. The, the Biden administration, um, everyone knew that Americans were going to die. Uh, how could they not? I mean, it's just, it's not, it's a matter of time when we're out there basically playing drone catcher. That's, that's what we do. We sit there and we catch drones. And, you know, the interesting thing about this is that we are spending ungodly sums of money, ungodly millions of dollars on these missiles to knock out these drones that cost thousands of dollars. This is not a, a very good strategy. It hasn't been from the get-go. And again, it, it goes to where we stand in the world as a nation. And yeah, I was thinking about it yesterday. Remember, remember there was the old, uh, was, was that going all the way back to to George H.W. Bush? Is that what he called it? The first Iraq war, shock and awe. It, there has to be some point in time, and I, I always go back to that uh, scene from The Godfather where uh, Don Corleone is warning the, you know anybody, the five families, that, uh, you know, listen, anything that I have for my son, he comes back, um, he's going to start blaming people in this room. You, you lay the law down and you respond, not in kind, but above in kind. Yeah, I, I don't like war. I, I don't like the fact that we're in all of these places. I don't understand it quite frankly. We've been told this since the uh, authorization back in 2001 that we've got to be here, there, and everywhere. Troops stationed here. It's a recipe for disaster. But if you don't have any sort of policy, you don't let your adversaries know that we're not going to allow this to stand. You attack us, it's going to be a mess. I mean, we heard the, you know, the, the attacks that we've been having, the, the response that we've been giving to the Houthis and some of these groups, we actually warn them to get their people out of harm's way. So we're blowing up weapons depots and cash and everything like that. And we're telling them, yeah, you can get all of your militants, get them out of the way. We're, we're warning them before we attack. Again, this is not by any stretch of the imagination, a sign of strength and where we need to be in the world. And again, I know I've been uh, here on the podcast. I've, again, I'm honest. I'm an equal opportunity bash going off on Trump, myriad of things. Um, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That this is probably one of his best selling points for the presidency, is that this stuff wouldn't be happening on my watch. And I, I tend to b believe that's the case. And and even, you know, this was I find is um, disingenuous by Republicans and conservatives that hate Trump. Like I said, I'm honest here. When they started talking about, oh, he's got this love of, uh, you know, strongmen and dictators. Wait. So y you think it's better our relationship with North Korea now than when Trump met with him? You do remember. You remember prior to Trump being out there, there, there was the you know, warnings and they were testing missiles and doing all of these things. Trump meets with Kim Jong Un. It stops. Isn't it better if we have a you know a relationship with Vladimir Putin? Maybe keeping him from I don't know invading other countries. 
I think that that's a much better route. And yeah, you even get the conservatives. I mean, oh yeah, he, he kowtows. He, he loves you know talking to dictators. What the hell? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you do that? So you, you don't have situations like we're dealing with right now. Again, if anybody out there can articulate where we stand. Again, Biden administration says we're going to respond. Okay, we're going to lob some very, very expensive missiles. Um, the, the question now is whether or not we're going to lob them into Iran. And right now, I, 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 don't, I don't see that happening. I, there's a fear that, uh, that Iran will uh, accelerate their nuclear program if we uh, we attack inside their country, or we're going to continue to to go after some of their their various different proxy groups here and there. Uh, but but I do want to remind everybody um, that these drones are manufactured by Iran. They're sold to Russia. They they make weapons too. Um, we also we we gave them back their money. If you do remember, right? The money that was only going to be spent on humanitarian concerns. Again. Um, just bad policy all around. And again, you know, I got back, got back to dinner last night and I, you know, start doing, you know, my show prep, start looking at things. And I'm like, I knew this was, you know, this was going to happen. This is going to happen. And quite frankly, so did the Biden administration. Watchdog on wallstreet.com.